I'll show you a variety of simple methods to make miniature jars using everyday materials you probably already have at home. For the first method, I'm using a glue stick. I'm slightly melting the bottom to give it a rounded shape. The flame softened the harsh lines on this glue stick and made it look more like a jar. I'm using some metal paper fasteners for the lid. You can always check out my description for the products and tools I use. I'm melting the glue stick a little bit more to round the bottom of the jar. I realized a little too late that holding the glue stick over the flame for slightly longer makes the glue stick more clear. This makes a more realistic jar. If you don't have paper fasteners, there are plenty of other things you can use for lids. I added a bit of hot glue to the top and let it cool slightly so it doesn't just stick to my tweezers. I only own a mini glue stick gun, but I also have these large ones that were given to me. I'm using the big glue stick to make jars with a bigger diameter. Making a variety of sizes makes your miniature scene look more realistic. My paper fasteners are way too small for this larger jar, so I made another lid with hot glue in a different method. I also used some buttons for jar lids. I encourage you to think outside of the box and use other materials you have on hand that'll work well for you. Some of these lids will be painted, so I trimmed the hot glue that squeezed through the buttonholes. I want to give the illusion that the jar is filled. I'm leaving a small gap at the top so the jar doesn't look completely full. I colored the back of the jar and the bottom. You can cover the entire jar, but I like how this looks. I plan to make this big boy into a pickle jar. If you don't have glue sticks, you can still make jars with other materials. I own more colored pencils than I could ever use in my lifetime. I chose a color I'm very unlikely to use and gave it the chop. My candle trick won't work on this wooden pencil, so I'm rounding the top and the bottom using sandpaper. When I'm painting an entire item, I like to glue it to a shiny surface to hold it while I paint. I mixed up some brown paint to make it look like a peanut butter jar. And then I did a bit of research and mixed up a new color. Beads are another great material to use for making miniature jars. I got these semi-transparent glow-in-the-dark beads at the Dollar Tree. You can also use regular pony beads. I cut some slices of glue stick to use for the lids. My nails are always a mess, but I do actually own nail polish. I painted the beads with the nail polish and used acrylic paint on the lids. I'm using some oil-based testers enamel paint to paint some of the lids metal. I chose the best looking lids to receive the paint. Others will be covered up with either paper or fabric. I'll show you a few options for labels, starting with hand-drawn labels. Before I started sketching, I chose the three jars I intend to use the labels for. 
I wanted to make sure they fit and that the label matches the color and contents of the jar. An easy way to make a good looking drawing with minimal skill is to lay down a color and then use a smaller marker to add some detail. When I cut out this label, I'll be able to tidy up the border. The paper is really stark white, so I'm using some chalk pastels to tone it down. For the second label, I googled a popular pickle brand and kind of copied it but added an S to the end, so don't sue me. This is the type of label you'd add to an item you can do yourself. I used some diamond glaze to protect the paper labels and make them a little shiny. Before gluing on the labels, I gave them a slight curve on a paintbrush. For the peanut butter jar, I drew a simple label over a bag of peanuts from a catalog. This brand of peanut butter of my own creation is called GIF. I don't have any green oil paint, so I'm mixing some blue and yellow together. If you're not feeling crafty, you can look through some magazines and cut out some graphics for your jar labels. You can barely read writing this small, so it doesn't really matter what it says, as long as you like the colors and the look of it. I wanted some adorable classic jelly labels, so I bought a graphic from Etsy. This was the easiest way to decorate the jars, and I was still able to add a whole bunch of custom touches. For the first style, you can use a colored pencil or a piece of glue stick. I did a little experimenting and this was the best way I could find to do this. I added the round piece of jar lid to the top and pressed the sides down. The main part of the pattern has this colored part which is the contents of the jar, the label, and a little strip at the top which is the edge of the jar lid. I did the same thing with a wooden dowel. Since you don't end up seeing whatever's under the paper, you can pretty much use anything that's the correct size. It really pains me to lose all of this printed part because that is a lot of ink, but I also cut out the label separately and attached them to jars. For the labels that didn't fit on the small jars, I cut a couple of them into smaller pieces. I had a large green jar with no lid, so I'm using some markers to transform this marmalade label into a lime jelly label, apparently. As little Gretchen would say, it was looking a little bit pre-K, but outlining it with black made it look a lot better. I'm making my own fabric for the fabric topped a jar because I didn't have a pattern I liked. This fabric lid will look like it's tied onto the jar, but I'm actually securing it using glue. I wrapped one strand of white embroidery floss around the top of the lid and tacked it in place on the back with some hot glue. I'm lifting up the edges of the fabric to make it look like the string is squeezing the fabric onto the jar. This jar is made entirely of hot glue, including a hot glue lid. I'm cutting this blueberry fabric into a square. I used a circle on the other jar.
You can do a similar technique using paper, which still kind of looks like fabric in the end. For the grand finale, I covered all of the jars with some glaze to protect the labels and make them look shiny. These are two more modified Smucker's labels I didn't show you earlier. For the jars that got fabric lids, I sealed them before adding the fabric. Whenever I'm making a bunch of handmade miniatures like this, I tend to finish all of the pieces. You can always hide the ones you don't like behind the better ones. Thank you so much for watching until the end.